Hi, my name is Dr. Claudia Sonder, and I'm the president of the Napa Community Animal Response Team. And today we had a great opportunity to have some of our volunteers come down and go through our hauling certification and inspection. Really nice opportunity for us to evaluate the hauling skills of our volunteers, put them through a small obstacle course, make sure that they can back up and, and get their trailer turned around efficiently. We can also go through a vehicle inspection checklist with them and a trailer inspection checklist, make sure that their vehicles are in good shape, that all the lights are working, that everything's been inspected, tires are in good shape. All the things we need to know before we send somebody out into a disaster situation. And we've got a great team of, um, of leaders with good experience that uh, can get this kind of testing done. Okay, hello, my name is Alan Harrison. Uh, I'm with Napa Cart, the transportation lead. And today we're going to be going over vehicle inspections. So first we'll start by uh, getting the paperwork out and making sure the vehicle's uh, legally registered. Registration, uh, valid insurance, and a valid driver's license for the size and type of vehicle which you are driving. Next we're going to be checking under the hood. So let's pop the hood and check the oil. First thing you're going to do when you open the hood is check the general condition of all of your uh, your hoses, your belts, your wiring, making sure that nothing is cracked, frayed, and everything is securely connected. Here you have your, your brake fluid, your engine coolant, windshield washer fluid, and your power steering fluid. So you're going to check the condition of your fan and make sure that there's no missing or bent blades. Check the condition of your serpentine belt and make sure it's got the proper tension. Uh, it's not cracked and properly hooked up. So now we're going to check the engine oil. And it's this dipstick right here. You just pull your dipstick, wipe it clean. Reinsert it and make sure it's at the proper level. With this vehicle, it's between this dot here and this dot right here. Check your battery. Make sure it's in good condition, that your leads are tight, there's no corrosion. And with this battery, it's a, uh, you, you can't access the, uh, the cells to check to make the water level and it also has an indicator to tell you if the battery is in good condition or not. To check your transmission fluid, with an automatic transmission your vehicle needs to be warmed, running, in park, and then you check the dipstick level. So if you have a, a vehicle with a manual transmission, typically you have to uh, go under the, trans under the vehicle to the transmission and uh, open the oil port to check the oil level there. You want to make sure to check your air filter. When we get deployed out in the fires and it's real smoky and dusty, your air cleaners can get plugged quite quickly. Make sure to check your owner's manual. It will give you all the information you need for the proper location and what it is you're supposed to check, uh, proper levels, and the uh, fluids that go in. So that gets our uh, under the hood inspection. Next, we're gonna go into the cab of the truck. Inside the cab here, our gauges, we have the, uh, the hood latch, brake release, foot brake, the parking brake, the lights, turn signals, gear shift, uh, radio controls, heater controls, two wheel, four wheel drive selector, and then you have a uh, all of your gauges, of course, the speedometer, your temperature gauges, the transmission, engine coolant, fuel gauge. And down here we have a brake controller for the trailer. Okay, and you also need to check your horn to make sure it's running properly. Before operating your vehicle, make sure that you're familiar with the location of all the gauges and what all of the uh, indicator lights on the dashboard uh, mean. Start the vehicle up and check the wipers and the windshield washers. Okay, so you also want to check to make sure that your, 
your windows are clean, um, no cracks. You definitely don't want to have any cracks or anything that impair the uh, vision of the driver. Make sure your mirrors are clean and properly adjusted. So we'll go ahead and back up to and hook up the trailer. And then once we get the trailer hooked up, we will go through and chuck all the lights and everything else. Now that we've backed our truck up to our trailer and we're ready to hook up, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your truck and your trailer are compatible in size. You don't want to have too small of a truck pulling too large of a trailer. The trailer can actually push you off the roadway. You can find that information on the data plates for the truck and trailer, the owner's manual, and if you uh, are really in doubt, check with the California Highway Patrol. The next thing is to make sure that your ball and coupler are the same size. You can see on this one, it's a two and five sixteenths ball with a uh, weight limit of 15,000 pounds, and it's stamped on the top of the ball. If your ball, if you cannot read that stamp, then your ball is excessively worn and needs to be replaced. Next, we'll discuss the uh, hooking the trailer up. You've got your ball, your hitch, the receiver, and the coupler. You need to make sure that your hitch and your receiver are the same size. This is a two inch, and that you have your, secure, your pin secured in here, nice and tight. This is a locking type pin uh, to, kept, to prevent theft. So there are several different types of couplers. Uh, you need to make sure that you know which type and size of couplers on your trailer and the proper way to uh, connect it to the ball. So, we'll lower this down under the hitch. You want to make sure that you raise your trailer jack all the way up. So you want to uh, close your coupler hitch and put the security pin in. Always, always make sure that you put your pin in. That will keep your coupler from opening up while you travel. We'll hook the safety chains up and when you are putting your safety chains in, you must make sure that they cross underneath. The reason for that is if, if at any point this whole assembly comes off, then you, the chains will catch the trailer instead of having the trailer just simply slam into the ground. Got your light plug, you make sure that you have the same type of plug on the truck and trailer. And the electrical emergency brake cutaway. Now when you're putting your emergency brake cable on, you need to make sure that it is a shorter than your safety chains. If, if your brake cable is longer than your safety chains and your trailer comes off the truck, it will not engage the, the brakes. So when your trailer comes loose, this needs to pull so that it engages the brakes. Otherwise, if your brakes don't get engaged, your trailer will just free roll, uh, slamming into the back end of your truck consistently. So this is your emergency trailer brake engagement cable. Uh, what happens when you, if, your if your trailer becomes separated from the truck, it pulls this pin, opening a circuit in here to the emergency uh, trailer brake battery, and that will engage your trailer brakes. Okay, so on this trailer, you have your emergency brake cable here, and this is your uh, battery box. So the batter this battery supplies the power to this uh, brake safety pin, so that if you uh, if this is engaged, it applies the uh, the brakes to the trailer. Uh, this trailer is a gooseneck. Um, is you want to explain how to how to properly hook up your trailer? Sure. Um, well, as I, I back it in with the uh, tailgate down, go over the center, um, this um, would be open like that. Okay. I back it in. As soon as the trailer is over the center, I put the lower the trailer down. I have a automatic uh, electric battery operated uh, as far as that goes. 
and I make sure that this is latched all the way down. I hook up my both of my chains, and this is my emergency um, braking. So if and it's always hooked to this, it's not hooked to that. Yeah. The emergency brake cable mm -hmm. needs to be shorter than your chains. Otherwise, if you if your trailer comes loose right. and your emergency brake cable is longer than your emergency chains, right. your chains will catch and it'll never engage your emergency brake. This is where I hook my lights and my electrical system into my truck. And now we'll move on to uh, inspecting the tires. We'll start right here is a data plate uh, located on the driver's side door that gives you the... Uh, proper tire size and the tire pressure. So for the front tire, the proper pressure is 70 PSI. On the rear tire, it's 80 PSI. And in the spare, it calls for 80 PSI. Okay, so to check the air pressure, there's, you'll see a lot of people come out and they'll kick their tires and say they're good. There's only one way of truly checking your tire pressure, and that's with a tire pressure gauge. Now this tire is at 70 PSI. Um, as you saw on the, uh, the sticker up on the driver's door, it calls for 70 PSI on the front and 80 PSI on the back. Next, we'll do our tire inspection. Uh, it's very important you have good condition tires when you go out behind the evacuation lines. The last thing we need to do is be having problems with flat tires. Um, we don't want to become a burden to the uh, authorities behind the evacuation line. So minimum required by law is 4 seconds of an inch on the front and 2 seconds of an inch in the back. And that is street legal, but going out behind evacuation lines, we would request that you have better tires than just the, the minimum. The tread depth on these tires is 13 30 seconds. Um, there are a wear bar on the tire that when it gets down to two, two thirty seconds of an inch, uh, the wear bar will be exposed. So you know that at that point, the tires have become illegal. And you want to make sure that there is no tread separation from the tire. Uh, and then you want to check your sidewalls, make sure that there's no cracks or no, bul no bulges in the tire. Um, that a, a good tire is going to be deep black in color. If they start fading out, then you know that they're starting to get old. According to the owner's manual in this truck, it recommends that you replace your tires if they're six years old. Uh, those, uh, requ those requirements differ between manufacturers. Here is your DOT code. So the, the, word, the, the letters DOT means it's been approved by the Department of Transportation. And these codes here tell you where the vehicle or where the tire was manufactured at what plant. And then these last four number letters, right? These last four numbers right here, 3320, tell you that this tire was manufactured the 33rd week of 2020. Okay, uh, on this vehicle is a four wheel drive model. Uh, this particular one has a a hub lock, you can turn it either uh, for automatic or for manual lock here. Uh, once again, uh, check with your owner's manual to see what type of uh, hubs you have on your vehicle. Here we are on the trailer tire. Uh, you do the same inspection on the trailer tire you do on the truck, but on a lot of trailers, you'll see if you pop this cover off and then pop this inner rubber cover off, there's a grease fitting right in here. To, uh, so you can lube your wheel bearings. Um, again, check with your owner's manual. Uh, on average, it's every 10,000 miles or once a year. Uh, check with your owner's manual for the uh, proper time interval and type of grease. Here we have the data plate. The, on the truck, it was on the driver's door. On this trailer, it's just a, a sticker on the side that gives you the the VIN number, the gross vehicle weight, the type of tires, the tire size and tire pressure um, is right in here, 80 PSI on this trailer. We've got our trailer connected. We've checked our, our tires. 
Uh, now we'll check the lights. I'll go up front and turn the lights on. Now we'll go to our headlights and tail lights. And then make sure to check your high beam lights. I'll go through the lights. I have my helper back there to uh, let me know if the lights are working. I got my left turn signal on and I've got my right turn signal on. Okay, I got my brake lights. Okay, and then you got your four way flashers. Now we will check the back end of the trailer. Okay, we have a ramp. This particular trailer has a ramp on it. We'll open the ramp, make sure that all the hinges are in good condition. Make sure that your doors will close and latch securely. Um, check the hinges to make sure that they're not loose. We'll lock these doors open. Same thing, check this door, make sure it closes and latches securely. The hinges are aren't loose and we'll lock it open. Okay, with, with this trailer, the manufacturer did not put anywhere to secure these panels, the, the dividers open. So I just installed a simple rope with a, and put a hook on the side there so that when you're loading, if you're trying to load an animal and you're on a bit of an incline, and this door doesn't stay open, it can be a bit of a safety hazard uh, when you're trying to get out, get the animals loaded. So since the manufacturer didn't put a, a method of securing these open, I just put a rope on and it's just something to, so that when you're loading the animals, uh, the door will stay open. You just want to do a, a general condition, a check of the condition of the inside of the trailer Make sure that the vents will open and close. It, it's very important when transporting um, large animals or transporting animals in general that there's a good airflow in the trailer. It can get very hot uh, and an animal can overheat uh, inside of a trailer if they travel for any distance in an enclosed trailer. Um, we'll also check the condition of the floor. This has rubber mats. We'll We'll lift up the mats and see this, this trailer has a, an a aluminum floor on it. So um, on older trailers with wooden floors, uh, you make sure that the wood is in good condition uh, and if necessary, replace the boards uh, as, as needed. So we're gonna inspect the window here. You wanna make sure that it'll open, that the hinges are in good condition, that it opens up. And closes securely. Now when you're transporting an animal you can open this little window and you see there's bars to keep them from putting their heads out. So you never want to travel with the window open like this. Um, the, if the horses have their head out they can be hit with rocks or other debris as you fly as you're driving down the road and it's even been known for horses to try to escape through the window and they've, it's been known for horses to end up on the ground as you're driving down the road at 60 miles an hour. You want to make sure you always put the window back up again. A few of the items that we will need to have on your vehicles. First of all is a warning triangle kit. Uh, in case you break down, uh, this is the only approved, highway approved kit for warning triangles, we definitely do not use burning road flares. You also have a first aid kit. You know, we've got a variety here. We've got this large kit. Really all you need to keep is a little basic first aid kit on your vehicle. And then we have a little kit here that I put together for some animal supplies. Now when CART sends you out, then we will give you um, all of the tools and equipment you needed for the job assignment that you've received. Uh, something else you're going to need on your vehicle is fire extinguishers. Um, this one's nice. It's two and a half pound. It's easy to store. Um, it's really recommended uh, the five pound and uh, much twice as much capacity for fire putting out. And then another thing you really need to have 
is glass cleaner and paper towels. Once you deploy out there um, in the smoky conditions with a lot of ash, it's very quickly, easily for your windows and mirrors to uh, get dirty. And you know how it is with a mirror. You get a slight film on there, the sun hits it just right, and now you can't see anything behind you. And then we have uh, road maps. Um, again, when you go out on a deployment, do not rely on your GPS uh, satellites or uh, those, those type of GPS units that are to come with your phones and your vehicles. Uh, they will route you around. Uh, if roads are closed, they'll try routing you around the road closure. Well, we will give you explicit instructions and maps as to where you're going and how to get there. Remember, when you're being deployed uh, out into the fire zone, that it's always safety first. First is your safety, then your team member's safety, then the safety of the animals. So the reason we're out here is to get the animals. Your safety and the safety of your team members is much more important than that of the animals. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in hauling for Napa Cart, give us a shout. Uh, you can get us at info at napacart.org and let us know if you have a vehicle and a trailer and you want to go through our hauling uh, certification training, we'd love to have you. And then we know that we can send you out for uh, evacuation purposes.